most of Reflow's parameters and settings support animation, and the creation of a basic curve is just a matter of a few seconds. In the first example, animator's speed value is animated from 0 to 2 and then back to 0. The associated keyframes are 0, 25, and 50. If the timeline slider is not at frame 0, please reset the scene. Spot the emitter speed parameter and enter 0. Right click on either the parameter name itself or the value and choose Add Key. Now move the timeline slider to frame 25, enter 2.0 under Speed and add another key. The process is repeated for frame 50. When the parameter is deselected, you can see that the value's background has turned orange, indicating that the value is animated. In a second step, a change of position along the x-axis is added. This time, the motion should start at frame 10 and end with frame 30. Again, the timeline is reset to clear the cache. Now, go to frame 10 and shift the emitter to its initial position. Right-click on the Position parameter and choose Add Key from the Position X submenu. Go to frame 30 and create another key, but this time from the X value directly. If you choose Add Key from the Global Position submenu, you create keys for all three axes. This is a very convenient method, because you do not have to create one key after the other. The same function can be found under the small key icon in the lower left corner of the GUI. When you click on it, you can choose whether you want to create position, rotation or scale keys for all three axes. The transformation option adds keys for all properties and all axes at once. These commands are also located in the Edits menu at Keyframe Entry. Of course, you can decide yourself which method you want to use. With transformations, it is also often necessary to switch between the local and global access system. To do that, please click on the appropriate button in the icon bar. As you have seen in the introduction, Setting keys is a matter of just a few clicks, and the workflow is very similar to other 3D programs. In order to manipulate the animation curve, Reflow provides a dedicated editor. You can open the Curve Editor from the Layout menu, or by right-clicking on an animated parameter. When you choose Open Curve, the parameter's curve is directly shown in the editor. The Open Curve option can also be chosen when the parameter is not animated. In this case, Reflow creates an empty curve as an attribute. This means that the parameter already has animation features, but without keys. Before we start to work with curves, we want to give you a brief overview of the curve editor's elements. The canvas can be seen as a function plotter and displays the animation curve. The numbers along the horizontal axis represent the current time in frames. If you prefer to work with seconds instead, you see Alt-T shortcut. With Alt-F, it is possible to switch back to frames at any time. The vertical axis shows the animated parameter's value or magnitude. To zoom in or out, use a middle mouse wheel. Panning is possible with the Alt key and the middle mouse button. Finally, a curve can be stretched and flattened with the Alt key and the right mouse button. Furthermore, there are commands to fit the curve into the canvas in the editor's icon bar. If you want to go to a particular frame, Simply drag the timeline slider to the desired position. On the left, there is a tree with the currently active nodes. Please bear in mind that the nodes with the animated attributes are not listed automatically. They have to be added with the Open Curve command from the Nodes right click menu. For lots of attributes, this is a very time consuming task. Therefore, there is a convenient function to add all of the nodes' curves. Right-click on the node in the Notes panel or the viewport and choose 
open curves. A similar option is available for the node's transformation values and it is possible to show the three curves of a transformation parameter with a single click. If you want to display more than one curve in the editor, select them with a shift click. If you think that the curves lack contrast, select a curve, right click on it and define a new color with change color. The Remove from editing list will remove the active attribute from the curve editor, but does not delete the curve itself. The animation attributes will be kept. When you decide to delete a node's animation, you have to decide whether you want to delete the keys or the entire curve. In the first case, you can add new keys to the still existing curve. In the second case, the curve and the keys will be deleted completely. The easiest way to remove one or more keys is to select them in the curve editor directly. To select a key, click on it or use the shift click method for multiple keys. Then press a delete key. All editor actions can be undone with the Alt Set shortcut. New keys are added with a double click somewhere inside the canvas and you do not have to click on the curve directly. A more accurate method is to press a control key. As long as a key is pressed, the mouse point is replaced and allows you to create new keys with higher precision. Click to add a new key. If you're not happy with the key's position, just click and drag it. This is also possible with multi selections. Another method is to select a key and enter new values for time and magnitude in the two fields above. When you change the position of a transformation key, the node's viewport representation is updated in real time. In the previous chapters of this lesson, you have learned basic methods of how to create and manipulate curves and keys. Now we want to dig a little deeper and share some tips for your daily work with a curve editor. The following example shows the animation curve of a straight motion. When you click on one of the keys, you can see an orange line. This is a key's tangent and used to change a spline's curvature by dragging it. This is exactly what a tangent does in Reflow, but here it is obviously not possible to drag the tangent. The reason is that the key's interpolation type is currently set to TCB, Reflow's default method. To change the curve's tension, choose Show Keys Properties from the editor's key menu. Here, you have the key's attributes and values at a look. If you want to create an ease-in effect, where the object speed increases slowly, the curve's start has to be flattened. To do this, enter 1.0 under Ease2 and watch how the curve flattens. The Ease2 and From parameters are normalized and values greater than 1 are not allowed. Another method is to place a mouse over the value, left click and drag the mouse up and down for fast changes or to the left and right for fine tuning. The curve is updated in real time. But maybe you prefer tangents which can be edited with the mouse directly. In this case, change the curve's interpolation method to Bessier, click on the tangent and drag it to the desired position. The tangents can also be manipulated individually. All you have to do is to break the tangent. A click on the other key reveals that its mode is still TCB. This means that different interpolation methods can coexist in one curve. Reflow's curve editor provides another two modes called linear and stepped. Linear curves do not have tangents and the curve's keys are connected by straight lines. With stepped, you can create sudden jumps in the curve. As said, all the modes can be combined freely within a single curve and it is possible to change a key's mode at any time. The start node and last node behavior functions allow you to define a curve's behavior before the first and after the last animation key. With constant, the current value will be kept while zero sets a curve to zero. The loop function is probably of greater interest. It copies the entire curve 
and creates an infinite repetition. Loop offset works as a previous function, but with a constant offset for each repetition. Follow tangent uses the last key's tangent gradient to continue the curve. Another very strong feature is the Curves Editor's ability to combine different curves with simple copy and paste actions. Individual keys or an entire curve can be copied and then merged with another curve, even from another object. The Paste menu under Edit provides several options to mix or replace curves from different sources. It is also possible to repeat this process at different points in time. Simply drag the timeline slider to the desired position and paste the keys again and again. Imported objects often contain animation data, and in many cases, the default SD is used for data exchange because it is supported by our connectivity plugins. An SD file can contain a large number of objects and is loaded with a Ctrl-I shortcut. When at least one imported node contains animation data, you see a thin yellow line in the timeline. This marker indicates the animation range of the imported object. A click on the object's node param shows that you do not have access to its position or rotation settings. They are locked. To unlock these parameters, click on the SD to curve button. Then the animation data becomes visible and the curves can be opened. In the curve editor, you see that there is one key per frame. Of course, it is possible to change the key's values but this can be a very cumbersome and time-consuming task. We therefore recommend changing the animation within your 3D application and re-exporting the object. In Reflow, you do not have to reload the node and recreate all of its settings. All you have to do is to update the SD file with Ctrl U. This function is also located under the File menu. If you import multibodies, please be aware that this node type does not support the import of animation keys at the moment. Export, on the other hand, is possible. When you import a standard SD with multiple nodes, then every object will be listed individually. When you delete one of the nodes, the other objects will be removed as well. With multibodies, all these objects are joined within a single node. Another benefit with multibodies is that you can load as many SD files as you want, while there cannot be more than one SD file with standard import. Multibodies are also unlocked by default, and there is no SD to curve button. To see how many objects are grouped inside a multibody, please open the Summary Info box from the File menu. There, you will also find information about the node's properties. Reflow is also able to load and save Alembic files. Imported nodes from ABC files are listed individually, and you can remove elements without deleting the rest of the scene. Another advantage with Alembic files is that it is possible to reposition the objects without losing the already existing animation data. During a simulation, a node's motion data is cached and written to files. Reflow's Export Central dialog provides access to all of Reflow's export resources. The first step is to decide which file type you want to use for export. If you are not sure, we recommend using the default resources because they are supported by the connectivity plugins and the Reflow render kit. Another option is to use the previously mentioned Alembic format. It is supported by most 3D applications and is platform independent. Since the Export Central panel is an important part of Reflow, we have created a video showing you how to work with this tool.